can fall apart or threaten to for many reasons. And then there's got to be a leap of faith. Ultimately, when you're at the edge, you have to go forward or backward. If you go forward, you have to jump together. This is a famous quote by Yo-Yo Ma, a Parisian Chinese chalice. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. At age 10, I was exposed to the political underworld of the church by my father and separated from it completely. At age 12, when I decided, okay, I'll take a risk, I decided to go back into church. I was told if I did not think about God in the shower, my sisters and me were going to hell. At age 16, I was exposed to other belief systems, ghosts, chakras, energy. I was, I was very confused for a long time about my concept of religion, my concept of a higher power, and what awaits me in the afterlife. So I have focused on staying in the present and living my life to the fullest. But even though I question the existence of a higher power, he, she, it has always been there for me. At age 18, I was applying for college. And I was so completely stressed out. My mother didn't know how to help me. My father, it had been years since he had gone to college. First daughter, then ready for school. I, I told my father I applied for several different schools. But really what it boiled down to when I got the letters was Florida Southern College, Hillsborough Community College, which had grammar errors on the application. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell where my choice was, what I decided to do. I was so thankful. It was not my first choice. I never heard back from my first choice, which ironically was Rollins College. And it wound up being the most amazing experience in my life. I have never regretted going to Florida Southern. The architecture, Frank Lloyd Wright, that campus is gorgeous. And I got to really connect with my passion for being around nature, my passion for psychology, explore all the fine arts. It was a little overwhelming because my interest was over here in music theater, and then my interest was over here with the literary magazine, and then Toastmasters. It came to my attention that I needed to focus, and sometimes it was distracting for my coursework. My second year, I was in a theater draft, drafting class, set design. I am not a hands-on type of person. I am a very abstract, creative thinker. So, of course, I waited till the last minute to create this massive set design for the exam the day before, or the day after. I go outside, uh, being a little hyped up on Mountain Dew, and decided to take a deep breath in the Hindu garden at Florida Southern College. Sat on the grass, it was cold autumn night, taking a deep breath, God, if you're there, give me a sign. I opened my eyes. What's that? A shooting star? Are you serious? God, if you're there, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> another shooting star. Could you believe it? And then another one. He was there. I called my friend. There's got to be a meteor shower. This is amazing. Can you believe it? So I run across outside to the lake, and I just stare up at the sky. And I'm utterly amazed by the fact that God responded to me. Little old me, who sometimes didn't even believe he was there. Later that year, I realized I was not happy as a carpenter working in the theater. Again, not a hands-on person. Would go into work three days a week, pick up a tool, look at it with a blank stare, get yelled at, put it back down, because I don't remember how to use it. I realized I am not... I'm not a tools person. I'm not somebody who enjoys building things. God, give me a way out of this hellhole. <laughs> what do you know? I applied for a babysitting position. They actually offered me a car to pick up their children. Mm -hmm. I could buy my own car with that job. 
I realized also my passion for caring for children and secured a job at the preschool later that year. Thank you. I'm living my passion. A few years later, I'm getting ready to apply for grad school. Oh God, very, very scared. Dealing with research, a last minute major change, applying for multiple grad schools, six PhD programs, two masters. It was a lot. And I was actually struggling with a very deep depression at that time as well. But lo and behold, I decided to go out on a limb and go to a career and grad school expo. Already got my six top choices. I'm already, my resume is already stacked. What do I have to lose? If nothing else, I get to meet new people. So I go. And I see a member from Rollins College representing the master's program in mental health counseling. Strike up a conversation. I really wind up enjoying what he's talking about. How we're required to have 10 counseling sessions in the first year to know what that experience is like as a client so we can be a better therapist. I enjoy the fact that it's mostly experiential exercises. Coming from a small school like Florida Southern, that's my life. It was a perfect fit. But I was so set on those PhD clinical root programs. I wanted to get my PhD by the time I was 28. I was ready. Sad. Even with all my experience, I didn't get into a single one. I applied to Rollins on a whim, and what do you know? I got in. They loved me. And that was another leap of faith. So thrilled, and I have become such a great person because of this program. One more example of a leap of faith. After dating a codependent and an alcoholic, in college, I decided to go out on a limb and invite somebody that I had met in theater. He was a good friend. He wasn't doing anything for New Year's Eve. Um, I, I was known for all my parties. Decided to invite him. Four years later, we are still together. So, just weak. Still can't go back to church without crying every time I hear the gospel music. But I am a firm believer that there is a higher power out there. And he's watching over me and all of us. Mm -hmm. Thank you.